Hi, it's the girl out there right here with you. It's me, Cindy. And this week we are here with the amazing, the wonderful, the... Okay, I'll then do oh, that. <laughs> I'll go. That's me, uh, Aretha from Soulfish Wellness. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I'm. I'm really good. It's been quite a day, and I. I'm excited to to talk with you. I know. I'm excited to talk with you too. I feel like this is sort of like just because people don't know. I we already had this conversation. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> we did that. We did that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was not happy with the sound quality, and now we are doing it again. So some things may sound like I'm really, really clever and know a lot about massage, but it's only <laughs> because I already had this conversation with you. Yeah. Um, because you know I am so clever. But uh, so okay, so you, uh, well, we're gonna backtrack a little bit, and um, so just so people know, what what made you dive into the world of massage? Well, I've been interested in massage for a really long time. Um, Even before I really knew that it was massage that I was interested in, I knew that I loved um, tactile, hands-on, physical sort of connection um, and also anatomy. So it took me a long time to put those two things together and realize that what that meant was that I loved massage. (laughs) But I have always really been fascinated by it. You know, my mom was a nurse. And so she had all these like medical textbooks and things that I would always be reading from a really young age. And I just think the body is super fascinating. And the more I learn about it, and the more I learn, you know, modalities and and healing techniques outside of Western medicine, the more, even more fascinating I find it becomes. So when I decided to put all of those ideas together and say, oh, I think I should probably get into massage. I, um, I was a little bit later in life and had a few other obstacles that got in the way, which meant, you know, I moved to a new province, which means you need money. And then we bought a house, which means you need money. So starting a new career with school isn't always uh, going to lead into an easy way of making money. Uh, and then I had a child and then I had another child and so life just sort of took on its own path and its own course and I don't regret any of those things that that I did before I started school they led me to where I am now and I really do believe that things happen when they're supposed to happen and and this was when it was supposed to happen and I had a ton of amazing experiences up until I decided to start school and then I, when it was time, it was easy and it it really was just the right thing at the right time. And you started school right near or right before the pandemic, right? Yes. Yeah. I started school in February of 2020. Uh, So we didn't get too far in before we were upended and the school was basically just creating a blended online in-person program on the fly, which they did beautifully and are still uh, using that with all of their new cohorts that have come in now. So they are actually still doing this blended of online learning with some hands-on learning as well. And, um, and so then you went out, you were able to just go and begin. And what has it been like for you? Because I find, well, I'm just going to speak from looking at you on this side is uh, you and I are very similar that um, we always like to kind of, you know, always kind of dabble and try new things as we kind of Lots learn. Of and, yes. yes. And so what have you found as you've started to begin this practice of yours? Well, I think one of the, my favorite things about it is that there are just so many modalities like really truly I still I couldn't tell you all of them I learn new ones all the time Mm -hmm. Uh, I was just talking with one of my colleagues who does Bowen therapy I had never heard of that before like there's literally every day I could hear of a new modality um so I that that just in itself is amazing right like you could literally never stop learning which is amazing for me because I'm a big old nerd and I just want to keep learning all the time I get the most passionate and the most engaged when I'm when I'm constantly learning and it's that learning that really keeps me moving forward Mm -hmm. 
And as I always joke, when I, when you're about to do a massage on me is we say like, Oh, tell me how bad it is. Tell me where it hurts. And mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. People love to know that they've earned a massage. It's like somehow just wanting one isn't good enough. You have to have like, you, you have to be the worst one in the world for sure. <laughs> but I don't, I mean, it's the way that people experience tension and, and their way, the way that their body processes pain, it's, it's all relative, right? It's, you can't, it's apples and oranges. You can't compare yourself to someone else. So I always just like to tell people that they earned it, right? You're not, you're not the worst. You're not the best. I don't, what is, what is the worst? Is worst better with, when it comes to pain? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So I just always tell people that they've earned it and they, they get to enjoy it. <laughs> There's something about that, right? Where we almost, I mean, I think probably you have some people that do come to you weekly, but there's something almost like it's guilt for us. Like, oh, you're really going to feel all of the things I've been carrying when you touch my <laughs> back. You're going to know, right? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. Yeah. There is, there's a vulnerability in that. There mm-hmm. is, there's, you know, having to be quite, uh, you have to let your guards down. If <laughs> Or, you know, you could try and get a massage and not <laughs> let your guards down, but it, what, then why? What's the point? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so do you find, um, like when we were talking last time, it was really interesting because you were talking about just uh, ways to remind ourselves to sit and ways, you know, I, I always carry um, my, my shoulders forward. And um, we were talking just about ways to remind ourselves. And even since we had that conversation, I've really been trying to be very mindful of the, the things you were talking about. So I don't know if you want to share a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what you're saying is, is definitely the crux of it. It's that mindfulness. It's the checking back in and uh, being aware of what your body is doing. So obviously our culture, the world that we live in, pretty much everybody is in this forward posture, right? Where your shoulders are contracted and probably raised up near your ears. And we get this forward head posture where like, your head is down, but then your chin comes up and that's, oh, that's so hard on your spine. And, you know, the, there are some sort of rules of thumb that you can remember when you're trying to realign your body, even from a seated position, things like if you were to draw a direct line across your shoulders in the front of your body, and then draw a direct line from shoulder to shoulder behind your body, what you want is those lines to be the same length. So when you're here, that front line is shorter. And if you are here, then that, that line in the back is shorter. So the intention is to have those lines be about the same without wrenching your body one way or the other. Imagine that you have strings pulling you out this way. And it's this sort of like breadth of space that you take up and then dropping your shoulders away from your ears, which is always a good one to do. You can do that sitting, standing, whatever. If you want, you can like scrunch them up really tight and then drop them, which is a good way to see how far they can actually go down. And other things like, you know, having your ribs sitting in, an, in alignment over top of your pelvis. And a good way to check that is if you can touch your bottom ribs and touch those little pointy parts at the front of your uh, hips, your, your as is they're called, it's like the pointiest bit that sticks out. You want those to be on the same plane, right? So like if here's your ribs and here are your pelvis, your little as is points, you want them to be right in line with each other. So not, not moving back, not coming out in front of them and finding that sort of middle ground balance. And what's happening here, once you get that alignment in place, is that your skeleton is doing the job. Your skeletal structure is taking on the responsibility of holding your body in line so that your musculature isn't having to do the job of holding your bones where you're putting them. So this alignment uses all of your joints, stacks your joints on top of each other so that that skeleton is doing its job you can keep moving up the joints too, right? Like you start with your hips, you get into your ribs, you look at your shoulders, you can look at your, your, uh, the axis of where your skull and your spine meet. So this is something like your spine actually goes up inside your skull. So you can't actually touch the top of your spine, but there's an axis there where your head sits on top of. And when it's, when it's really sitting in alignment, it's, 
free and light and easy. Whereas when you're here in this position, there is so much pressure uh, that builds up in your spine that your body will flush it with lots of extra fluid and stuff just to try to protect it. And that's when you get all this like chronic inflammation in your neck and pain. So a way of thinking about that is by bringing your ears directly over top of your shoulders with your chin parallel to the floor, or maybe even just raised up a little bit. And if you can sit in that, if you can find it, it take a little while to like feel it in your body and then sit in that posture for a little while to really ingrain it in, in your body, in your mind, to see how that feels. Then it's easier to come back to that throughout the day. Right. right. And we had talked about, there's so many different ways you can come up with a million different cues for yourself to go back to that position. One of my favorite ones was to actually put an alarm somewhere across the room so that you now have to get up. You have to go across, you have to turn it off. And then you have to, <laughs> that's my dog. Uh, you she, get a dog. So you have to go, uh, go your touch dog. your dog, go pet your dog and then come back again. And, uh, <laughs> and when you sit down after you've done this, whatever it is that's gotten you up, go through that realigning pattern, right? And, uh, you know, you could really start from feet on the floor, you know, feet flat on the floor. If they're not flat on the floor, you should have a box or something for them to be on. Your knees should be at 90 degrees. Your pelvis should be in a neutral position. You really like, you can do this whole stacking right from the ground up to the head. And right. if, if you're cueing yourself to do that, then you're gonna be light years ahead of if you're just here for eight hours, right? Yes. Like some people just, they're here forever. And yes, this position is better, but really whatever you're gonna do next is best. The next position you're in is the best position you're in because your body wants to be moving. It's that static stillness that's really hard on the body. So, you know, another fun way to do it would be to create a playlist that you're listening to and every hour or so, pop in a dance song and get up and dance to it, shake it out and have fun. Or, you know, simple things, put a sticky note up on your computer so that every time you glance at it, oh yeah, right, boop, 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 see how that feels, right? There, there's lots of ways you can do it so long as you're doing it, you just have to do it. That's the thing, you have to be mindful, you have to put it into your head and you have to want to start evolving yourself into alignment because it might feel really foreign. It might feel really uncomfortable for some people. Like if you're really in this contracted position all the time, coming into this sort of like neutral open space, it might feel really weird. It might feel like you're like, whoa, what am I doing? Right. Yeah. But just, just keep coming back to it. Just keep coming back to it. Cause we're, this is relentless, right? Eight hours at a desk. That is relentless work. So you have to be just as relentless in the undoing of that coming back to it again and again. It's true. And I, I think I, I know I, I used to have a sticky note on my computer and how amazing it was that I actually would not even look at yeah. it. So <laughs> right for too long, you'd become blind to it, blind to it, yeah. it change really, the color or something <laughs> you need to have. And as you're saying, like the, um, how we're so ingrained in doing this, um, how relentless we do have to be. And like all of those ideas you're saying are so good that even in this last week, I, I really, so it's actually good that we're having this talk again. Um, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> is I actually had, um, I put in dance music, I stood up, I changed, oh, I'm sorry. There's a, we are having noises no matter how we do this. It's going to be, it's a noisy it's thing. Be it. We're having um, noises. But you had even suggested, because I was talking to you about how I, I'm now sitting so much more. Mm -hmm. And it was, I, I know that lots of people have stand-up desks, which are great. Yes. Um, but I had elevated my laptop because I am sitting quite a bit. Um, but you had suggested even doing it, where did you say, to chin level, right? At least chin level, or maybe even just slightly above it so that your gaze is slightly up rather than down down and I just noticed it, so I, I even lifted mine up higher and noticed that oh even that right because then how you're typing mm -hmm. thing is different everything right it's just I'm like oh this does make me actually <laughs> it really helps. don't realize it, it makes yeah. a big difference in the way that you're sitting and to go even further because I'm a giant nerd and I love yes. science uh when you are looking up with your eyes, you're actually cueing a, a reaction in your brain to stay awake and to stay cognitively 
focused on what's happening. So when you're looking down, the opposite is actually happening where, so if you're like at school and you're like this and you're looking down for a hundred years, that's working against you really badly. So if you can be up and actually watching and paying attention, you, even just that physiological position with your head up and you can, if you look, apparently this is science, uh, <laughs> if you look up for 30 seconds, like as far up as you can look with your eyes, that's it, that triggers this response in your brain where you're going to feel more cognitively focused on what's happening. So having your computer up a little bit, that triggers that as well. Okay, science. Who knew? <laughs> you're full of good things. Well, I do. I love good things. I listen to podcasts <laughs> like you and, you know, neuroscience. <laughs> yeah, you know, me and neuroscience, right? They go hand, they go hand in hand. <laughs> The same. All the same. <laughs> so do you want to talk, um, and because there's a drill going, which is so great. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about, um, it, could you, do you want to share a little bit about what you had your experience? Mm -hmm. I know today? you could maybe see my hair looks like it's wet. It's not water. It's oil. Mm -hmm. Yes. I had, so, okay, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. I decided for my new year's resolution this year to experience one new modality or like treatment every month that I have never experienced before. And I've been really good up to this point. I did reflexology. I did some cupping and acupuncture. Um, I've done, uh, oh geez, a Lomi Lomi, which I did in Hawaii. It's a traditional Hawaiian massage. I, it's been amazing. It's been really great. And because I just had my birthday in June, as did someone else I know one or two other June girls out there um I got a gift certificate to this beautiful Ayurvedic spa and this 90 minute treatment with hot oil pretty much if it's Ayurveda it's oil there's lots of it it's their whole concept of wellness revolves around oil in fact the word in Sanskrit for oil is the same word for love. And so they, oil is paramount to wellness there. And so this treatment, my goodness, I, it was like cascades of warm oil curtains rubbed on my body. Like I could have just had that for 90 minutes and that would have been amazing too. But then there was massage on top of that. Lots of, you know, long flowing strokes, lots of, you know, working it was really interesting i i was never in a prone position which is like a face down position and pretty much all of my treatments for the most part are a majority in a face down position so for me to learn how much you can do in this supine position or like laying on your back face up was really interesting and there's definitely a lot of cool techniques that i want to take from that um and that's that's sort of the point of the modality challenge that I've given myself is to now take from all of these new experiences and see how I can incorporate them into my practice and see what it takes. You know, for a lot of them, there is extra certification that gets required and or just is better if you do the certification. You're not necessarily required to get it, but nerd go to school yeah okay I can do that um so you know this kind of treatment I had learned in school originally doing an Ayurvedic head massage and this was a full body so it was it was definitely a very different experience but you know we started by looking at a dosha quiz and so uh next to how important oils are the oils they decide that are best for you, best suited to help you are decided based on what your dosha is. So it's sort of like an ancient personality quiz. Like if Cosmo was around 5,000 years ago, this was what they would have been sending out uh, in their, in their uh, magazines. And basically there are three different doshas. There's Pitta, Kapha, and Vata. And then there is a tridoshic uh, quality, which would be all three, if you're equally all three of them. Uh, and so I was Pitta, no big surprise. I am every time I do the test, uh, which is a fire and water element. And 
uh, you know what, there, you, we could talk about this particular thing for the whole time that we're doing this, which, you know, maybe isn't what everybody wants to hear, but I think it's so fascinating. It's what so am I? Fascinating. You, I, you're pretty Vata, but you might be pretty tridoshic really in the end, because <laughs> that's, that's just the kind of person that you are. Um, but so everything that you would do, you're picking, um, a massage oil, you're doing one that would pat, like I had a pitta pacifying massage oil. So one that helps to neutralize and manage and, and balance that dosha. Uh, so, you know, each one had its own different blend that you would use, but you would use that also in terms of your diet, what you're eating, certain doshas, you know, I, because it's a fire element, eating things that are really spicy or really hot, that aggravates my, my negative side effects of this dosha personality so you would want to eat cooling things and have things that are like pacifying to that dosha instead of aggravating okay. and it's personality it's medicines it's foods and teas and it, it's all encompassing because ayurveda isn't just massage it's way of life it's a way of life that they have so it's like it's like how yoga isn't just postures it's they've got like eight different branches of what yoga is if you're really a yogi that encompasses this whole kind of lifestyle it's the same with ayurveda it's you eat certain foods and during certain times of year based on your dosha like it's very all-encompassing right yeah and I so this you know yeah. lovely oil delight that i have going on i'm gonna leave that on for a while i've it's been gosh what is it? it's been two hours now that i've had it in I okay. will go sit in a really hot bath. Okay. All of those pores will open up and that oil can really set in and it'll help to balance my oil production. So, you know, if you're someone who suffers from really oily hair, it feels counterintuitive, but doing these oil treatments on a regular basis really will help you because when you're constantly cleansing and trying to get rid of the oil, get rid of the oil, your body's like, oh, we don't have any oil, keep making more oil. And so when you have this, oil treatment in your hair, it's actually helping to, uh, to manage that oil production so that your body's like, oh yeah, we're good. Look, we're healthy. We're strong. We're, you know, hydrated and moisturized and we've got strong roots and we can, we could all just take a break. Everything is good. It is really fascinating, right? When mm -hmm. you hear all of those different points to it, it's a deep well of information, isn't it? It is. And you know what? It's no flash in the pan fad either because it's five thousand years old so that you know things like this don't last for as long as they do they're not around for as long as it's been if there isn't some real god's honest truth in there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so are there certain areas of the world where like this is happening everywhere all the time all the places Certainly in, in Eastern cultures, for sure, you know, traditional Chinese medicine, um, Ayurveda, um, Reiki, there's a lot of over, which is Japanese, uh, there's lots of overlapping concepts and theories, uh, energy work, pretty much if you're, they all subscribe to like a chakra system of right. some kind, it's all energies and points and um, that those things are pretty, there's kind of an umbrella concept in all of those Eastern traditions, which again, I think speaks to the validity of that information when it's, when it's coming from so many different places. You have to remember 5,000 years ago, they weren't like texting each other to be like, yo, did this chakra thing work? Like what's the heart one green, right? Like what? They weren't, <laughs> like they weren't, they weren't able to communicate that way with each other and they still were coming up with these same concepts and these same things that were being proven to be true over and over and over again, mm -hmm. oceans away from each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is, it is so profound. So, um, yeah. And do you feel better like through your whole body after you get a massage like mm. this, how do you feel? Like, do you feel a difference in one type of massage versus another? Yes and no. Like, uh, you know, certainly the the physiological response in my muscular skeletal system is usually pretty similar um yeah. you know this ayurveda can be really gentle and really light and really surface sort of work but um he got in there real real good he i had i had a 
therapist who has been practicing for 42 years. So he had some very skilled hands and some very interesting techniques that he used. And because he knew that I was a therapist also, I think he was probably able to to do a little bit more deep work, knowing that I could say like too much or good, that's more like whatever, knowing that I would be confident in saying that. Whereas maybe with someone else, it would probably be a little bit less intense on the first visit where you would like want to get that relationship going first. Right. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I was mushy. I was, I was a big old oily pile of goo. It was delightful. (laughs) I love it. So how, I mean, how often do you really recommend that people are doing this? Oh gosh. I mean, it's so hard to say if you could get a massage every week, that would be gold, right? Like I have quite a few clients that I see regularly, weekly, and it's just maintenance, right? It's just keeping ahead of the problem so that you're not, once you're, once you've got a problem and you're trying to come back from it, that's when it's difficult. You can be out in front of the problem and you know you know where your problem areas are you know that you sit all day or you know that you're on a bike all the time or whatever it is and we can sort of keep in front of those areas that are the chronic sticky ones that come up first so it Mm -hmm. it if you could do it weekly that would be super duper awesome obviously that's not the case for everybody um could you go monthly that would probably be really good um, what, whatever it's going to be, because at the end of the day, if it's causing you stress to think about like, Oh, I'm going to get my money or like, Oh, the time, or what am I going to get childcare? And what are we, that's not beneficial either. Right. Like if you're lying there thinking like, Oh, I got to squeeze this and I only have 45 minutes now. What am I going to, that, that, that's not going to help you. So you need to find the thing that works for you. And there's yeah. lots of things you can do at home too. Right. Like it doesn't have to be going to get a massage in order to show your body a little self-care there's lots of stuff you can do at home that pot like just figuring out some alignment because really what massage isn't a magic cure I mean you're not going to come in one time and I'm like oh fixed it you're welcome right like because you're going to go back to yeah you're going to go back to your computer and you're going to go back to that position and you're going to keep doing it over and over again so I'm just sort of undoing whatever chronic pattern that you're got yourself stuck in But if you can start to like really backtrack, go back to the beginning, go back to the root cause, why this is happening, where it's stemming from and start to address those issues, which I can't, I'm not going to go home with you and tell you to sit up straight. Like that's not something I can do. So you have to be in charge of doing that. So, you know, lots of things, stretching, obviously taking time to get into that habit forming thing where you're doing the same thing over and over again so it cues to be a a relentless habit in a good way instead of in a bad way but you know self-massage is good there are a million different electric you know pounding massagey things and (laughs) lacrosse balls if you could just go it's like two dollars to go buy a lacrosse ball if you go get a lacrosse ball and just roll it like up on the wall or on the ground oh it's like the perfect kind of like soft but not too soft rubbery and not too hard but like oh lacrosse balls all day long that's all you need really (laughs) that's get yourself out of this I have heard that uh, from people who definitely who have major lower back pain or whatever that they have said is getting a ball to make sure for maintenance too right yes and I I will say too um for people if they go onto your Instagram and I know there's lots of people out there doing things but I have found um some really interesting things like when and I'm just it's coming to my head when you talked about the hips over feet and Mm. that little bit hip width actually means I know everybody they you you go hip width and people put their feet as wide as their outside of their pelvis and that's yeah that's not what it is really hip width means that your feet the center the middle of your feet are directly underneath where your femur your leg bone sits inside your hip bone which is usually about two fist widths but if your feet are two fist widths apart that that's what hip width is yeah and it's much narrower than people think yeah I know I just ever so there's the little facts that you always put up there where I'm like I didn't I did not know that yeah. well, I have been lied to my whole life I, what an interesting little fact she just put up there <laughs> little tidbit 
another little tidbit from scientist Aretha. <laughs> so, okay. So we will round up the one little thing, which I wanted to just you to share is the hair pulling. Mm-hmm. I know so, you love that one. <laughs> I want you to share about the hair pulling. So the hair pulling goes back to Ayurveda again. So this is yeah. talking about like an Ayurvedic head massage, which is in India, if you were going to go and get a haircut, the, the massage part is 90% of what you're there for. They, they love head massage. They love oily head massage that addresses the scalp. So the, when you're, the hair pulling is one of the many, many different things you can do. Uh, you know, friction, rubbing back and forth really fast, or like actually just moving the skin around over the skull versus like moving over top of the skin um there's marma work that you can do so marma points are like energy points in the body that would you know a blockage in one of those 108 i think there are marma points in the body would be a root cause as to why something else is coming up or not or not working or deficient in some way and so working these energy points is part of it but the hair pulling call it tugging hair tugging because it's it's not doesn't hurt it's really gentle you go like right up against and you just give a little tuggle and what it does is it really flushes the area with lots of nutrient rich blood and oxygenated blood which helps to keep all of those hair follicles and pores really healthy and happy and when it strengthens them as well so as the hair grows you know the concept is that it keeps your hair growing faster uh, stronger, shinier, healthier in general. So, you know, you, I mean, not to stereotype, but most Indian people have beautiful, long flowing locks and they've been doing these amazing head massages forever. So their pores are healthy, their hair follicles are strong. And that's, that's a big part of it. It is, it it feels good. (laughs) It feels good too, right? Like it's, I don't know what, I didn't expect it to, I didn't know what I was expecting, but you're, it does feel very, um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting thing. I've never had a a massage. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting thing for sure, but it's, you know, again, one of those things that once you've experienced it, you're like, oh, I can do that. I I can do that. Like what, why would you not do it? Yeah. Yeah. And you had the, um, well, you had the little brush and you also now are doing, uh, now see, I'm asking more questions, but the, um, what was it with the face that you're doing? Oh, gua sha. Yeah. So that's, uh, I, that's more of a traditional Chinese medicine concept where gua is like a scraping that you do. So you've seen these tools, right? They're really popular right now. You can get them in jade or quartz, uh, stainless steel, I've seen some like black obsidian ones like there. And again, all the stones would have their own properties if there was something specifically that you were trying to do. But the, the basic concept of gua sha is that you're um, using this scraping against the skin to release the sha, which is like a stagnation in this, in this, uh, in the either lymphatic system or your blood, your like whole everything underneath. So, it, you know, there's different things. If, if the sha comes up in, dark colors it means there's you know inflammation and chronic it's too much heat or whatever if it comes up in a lighter color or grayer circle like there's all these different things that it might mean and then they'll use that information to diagnose sort of backtrack again what system isn't working what energy points need to be released what where can we work on that but then just that scraping is is a the beginning of the treatment where you would then release all of that so when you're working in the face it's much gentler than that. A, you know, a real true traditional Chinese medicine scraping is intense. Um, mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but if you're doing in the face, then it's much gentler. And so that now this concept is the same where you're flushing the skin with all of this fresh blood. Uh, you're bringing it right up to the surface where it cools and settles down. And so it helps, uh, you know, with with the health and of the tissue in the skin, but then it's also accessing all of the muscles in the face, which are, there's, I think, 43 muscles in the face. And so we forget how how much percentage of your muscles in your body that is. And so when you're, when you're toning these muscles here and here, like all of these things, then it helps to keep them where you want them and not saggy, saggy, sad muscles. You want to keep them really toned and healthy. 
uh, which you was this is a beautiful way of doing that. And so, you know, again, it's one of those modalities where it's it's sort of been taken and run with in a Western way. So it's this ancient Eastern thing that's been around for a million years. And now finally, Western people are like, oh, this is cool. I'm gonna do this. And so you can find lots of people who do it in a much more neo-Euro sort of way. And then there's lots of traditional people. If, you, if you've studied as a traditional Chinese medicine doctorate, it's literally like a doctorate, like it's years of study. Yeah, right. if you're doing a weekend course to learn how to gua sha in a facial, uh, you're not you're not a Chinese medicine doctor now. But it's 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 a good tool to have, and again, one that you can do at home. And there's lots of great YouTube videos and lots of great people who are helping spread that information and, and teach people how to how to keep care of themselves at home. But of course, it is never quite as good as having someone do it to you. <laughs> no, totally true. No. Oh, well, thank you. Thank I you. I feel like you just like shared a whole wealth I, of. I feel like we do that when I go in, whenever we get these conversations together. It's just like, blah, 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 blah. I know. Every, every thought I've ever had. <laughs> no, but the, it's so great. You just shared a whole bunch of information, which I think will be so useful. And what you did share last time, and I just have to say it again, is that when you said sitting is the new smoking. Sitting is the new smoking. Get your body moving, whatever it is. Like literally, if it's get up and just shake out and sit down again, that's better than, than static stillness in your body all day long. So do it a little bit, set an alarm, get, get an accountability group where you're you know keeping track of each other's movements or whatever it is there again so many different things that you can do so many tools so many apps so many you know you can get one of those they've got these cool like rings now that yes. track like every bio data available to your body like uh, uh, i don't know i know <laughs> they, they, people who had so used them things. they do use the aura rings when uh they're doing energy sessions with me it's mm. it's fascinating to watch yeah. what happened yeah that would be fascinating yeah even when they're in different countries yeah so cool. I mean, we should we could come back around to talking about how amazing Reiki work is. I know. <laughs> yes, Reiki was one of my modality challenges. And yes, it was way cooler than I thought it was gonna be. I thought for sure it'd be like, yeah, yeah, okay. But I was like, what? I could literally tell what you were doing the whole time you were doing it. My book. I know, see? Yeah, I know. So amazing. Oh so yeah, that that's on my list too. Yeah. Just one more thing. We're gonna learn it all. You gotta do it all. I know. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for doing it again. And I and hope yes. it was, you know, again, the noise. No, we, we, we apparently different. attract uh, we sound. Just, we to just us. are sound, uh, sound attractors, but that's okay. That's we, okay. We will make it work. And, you know, if people are, out, you know, anybody that's listening, if they have more questions, if they have, if there was something that was cute, a light bulb, or you want to talk about it, Send, send me a message, send me a message. No, where can all they our, find all you? All our detail is out there. Uh, well, you can find me uh, on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. I have a website. If you look up Soulfish Wellness, it's all one word all together. There's really, it's just me. You're not going to get lost. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think I think on Instagram, it's soulfish.wellness, maybe. But I'll add it all in there. Either way, you'll find it. You're going to yeah. find it. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh.